does not matter anymore if other people are misguided as long as you are guided. Meaning, worry about your own affairs. Worry about your own mistakes. Do not talk about other people at all. It is not your affairs. Be wary of ghiba because it will destroy and eat up your, your deeds. It will eat up your deeds. And so who is the next person? The person that was swimming, swimming in the ocean. He was a person who took riba. And of course, not only is this a punishment of someone who takes riba, it's also the punishment of someone who gives riba. And someone who also deals in riba and agrees and he signs the contracts and is witness to riba contracts as well. This is the person who has been punished for that. And how careless are we? We are so careless about it that we buy our houses and build them and we give an easy excuse to subhanAllah, you know, we are in difficulty and need. Allah will forgive us. Are you sure Allah will forgive you? Have you truly struggled for His deen? Have you really done everything that's possible? Are you really sure? Are you really sure Allah is not mocking you through this? Perhaps increasing your, your sins in your grave? Wallahi, be completely sure before you do anything, a sin, because you think that you are able to do it or you have an excuse. Be very, very sure. This is why truly about these matters, no one should do, deal with it except someone who fears Allah. Someone who truly fears Allah. And has true, what a true fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is hard. The next person, the person who was on the ground and his head was being crushed with a boulder and a big, a big mountain. Who was that person? That was a person who knew the Qur'an and he did not act according to it. And who knew the Qur'an and he forgot it. Is there anyone amongst us who has learned a verse of the Qur'an that he's forgotten? Perhaps everyone. Yes? Wallahi, every one of us has perhaps learned a surah and we've forgotten parts of it. By Allah, this is the punishment of that person. Do not be away from the Qur'an. Do not, how dare you learn the Qur'an and forget it? How dare you learn the Qur'an and not act according to it? The Qur'an was not revealed so that it is a beautification, you can put it up on your homes. It was not revealed for that purpose, nor was it, was it revealed so that you can hang it up from your car. It was revealed so that it is read and understood and memorized. Also the last person, who was a person that was being punished in the furnace, that was a person who was being punished because of committing zina. And not just zina, zina has different levels. Looking, a second look. Or zina of the hands, zina of the arms, zina of the face, zina of the lips, and zina of the private parts. So zina has different levels. So by the level of zina that you've committed, you'll be punished in the grave. So be very worried, please be very worried. Once Rasulullah passed by two graves and he said, Inna la yu'adhiban. Verily, these two people are being punished. Wama yu'adhiban fi kabir. They're not being punished for something very, very, very grave. Meaning, not, not for something really huge. What did they do? As for one of them, kana yamshi bin namima. As for one of them, they need to spread tales. Spread tales, meaning speak ghiba and spread bad things about other people. As for the other person, fakana la yastatiru an bawl. As if, as for the other person, he used, not, he used to be not careful. When he was urinating, he would not cover himself. So like for example, you know how you use those ur- urinals for the men? Use the urinals to actually urinate? That is a punishment for someone who does not cover himself when he's, when he's passing away, when he's passing his, his uh, excretions. You cannot use urinals. You must use proper bathrooms. Cover yourself. This is haya have shame. And this is the punishment of someone who did something so simple, right? So simple as this passing urine, no one cares even these days. But yet, this is the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My, my brothers and sisters in Islam, how do we have safety from the qabr? And the punishment of the qabr? The first thing that we can do is make intense amounts of dua. Rasulullah sallallahu never used to say a prayer, except that he would always say, Allahumma jannibna min adab al-qabr. Oh Allah, give us safety from the punishment of the, of the grave. A'udhu billahi min adab al-qabr. Seek refuge in Allah from the punishment of the grave. Once you do that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will surely answer your dua, inshallah, He's merciful. So keep on asking Allah for punishment, for safety from the punishment of the grave. The second thing that you can do is increase in your good deeds, because the hadith in Ibn, in Ibn Hibban and others mention, in, in Mustadrak of Al-Hakim, rahimahullah, he mentions that the good deeds will come in the form of soldiers in your grave, and they will defend you from the pain, and angels of punishment in your grave. They will defend you from the angels of punishment in your grave. And there are good deeds. There is your fasting and there is your Qur'an. They will defend you in your grave against, your, against the angels of, of, of punishment. The third thing that you can do, the third thing that you can do is to be steadfast upon this religion. And always be steadfast. Because as we know, the people who are steadfast, they will never have any khawf alayhim after they pass away. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ Verily those who say, Allah is a Lord, ثُمَّ استَقَامُوا 
Thereafter they remain steadfast. تتنزل عليهم الملائكة The angels descend upon them. ألا تخافوا Do not be afraid. ولا تحزنوا Nor no grieve. وابشروا بالجنة And take the glad tidings of Jannah. التي كنتم توعدون That you have been promised. نحن أولياءكم We are your helpers في حياة الدنيا In this life. ولكم فيها ما تشتهي أنفسكم And for you the hereafter is whatever your hearts desire. ولكم فيها ما تدعون Is whatever you ask for. نزل من غفور رحيم A beautiful dwelling from the Lord most merciful. So be steadfast upon your deen. The next point is a surah which is surah mulk. And this is authentic, hadith is authentic in Mustadrak of Al-Hakim upon the conditions of Bukhari and Muslim. And al Dhahabi said the hadith is authentic. What is the hadith? The hadith says, surah mulk protects you from the punishment of the grave. Which is surah mulk? What verse is it? What surah is it? Surah number 67. You must recite it every single day. And the, and the hadith also mentions that surah mulk does not stop asking Allah for your forgiveness for you until it goes under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begging for your mercy until Allah forgives you. So this is the way you protect yourself from the punishment of the grave. There are other things that the ulama mentioned as well, such as for example dying on Friday, such as for example dying in Medina. However, none of these can prevent you from your punishment if you truly deserve to be punished. What can truly prevent you from punishment is that you are a righteous person. Because look, weren't the hypocrites that died in Medina? Of course, aren't they being punished? Of course they were. And those graves that Rasul said that these two people are being punished, aren't they from Medina? Of course they were. So they were, were being punished. So the whole point is that you cannot prevent yourself from the punishment of the grave until you rectify yourself. So please, this is my honest plea to everyone here, to rectify yourselves before, the, before we go to the grave. Rectify yourselves, please, for your sake. Rectify yourselves so that inshallah you do not be from those people. Let's stop here for another five minutes inshallah. And then we'll come back.